let's 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 go ahead and jump into what the Lord will have to say today. And I pray, I pray that God God moves. <clears throat> We're gonna go to First Peter chapter one, verse number ten. We're gonna read some verses there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 1 and verse number 10. It says here, Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, Verse 11, searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Key verse, verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Father, we thank you. And we bless you now. For the grace of God. For your voice to be heard. and your spirit to be released and your grace received we bless you and thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus all of God's people said amen amen you may be seated um, in the house of God I want to deal with you um, on this afternoon a little bit concerning the mind um, some aspects of the mind and its connection to our calling and our purpose I want to deal with that and, and the responsibility of our mentality we, we are responsible for the condition of our mind more so than we realize we, our mind isn't just supposed um, to to be handed over to every whim of thought, in a sense. But we are responsible as believers to now allow God through now uh, yielding and following him to bring us to a particular state of mind called the mind of Christ. We have a responsibility in that. And I believe because we don't understand the student, because like, man, these thoughts just come in my mind. I can't help it. These thoughts just come in my mind. I can't help it. These thoughts, we don't understand there is a level of accountability, amen, to now what goes or let me say this, what stays in our mind. It's one thing, I forget a preacher said, it's one thing if a bird flies over, it's another thing if he lands. Sometimes thoughts fly over. They just shoot through and it's like, man, that we, didn't, we know we shouldn't have thought that, but it don't land. I'm talking about thoughts that constantly land that we know aren't thoughts that we should be now functioning in. And, um, and so let me, let me jump back into 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 13. It says, wherefore, gird up 
the loins of your mind be sober and hope to the end. Three admonitions that 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 now uh, uh, that Peter gives to the believers. Three responsibilities, but they're all tied together. He says, first of all, gird up the loins of your mind. Secondly, be sober. Thirdly, hope to the end. See. We, uh, it's, we're responsible to be sober, but I believe that we will never live in the necessary degree of soberness. There's one thing that's lacking now is the soberness. Everybody is kind of in a uh, drunken condition when concerning iniquity and sin and unrighteousness. For some reason, we think that God at this time winks at it because so many people are still operating in it. It's because we lack soberness. So we, 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 we stop emphasizing righteousness and we stop emphasizing obedience because after now getting drunk a while it doesn't hit us like it used to that the people who don't repent of these things no matter how much we love them no matter how much we slap wings on their obituary if they weren't living in the righteousness of God then they did not enter into the kingdom of God glory be to God and, and what happened happens is when we don't gird up the loins of our mind we're not sober enough to live at the level of witness we need to to recognize man there are people all around me that I love that honestly ain't gonna make it soberness and the power of hope hinge on us understanding how to gird up the loins of our mind. I want to talk to you about that a little bit today. N notice Peter's wording. Notice his wording. Gird up the loins of your mind. Gird up the asphus. That is the Greek word for loins. Gird up the asphus of your mind. What is the, uh, Peter trying to help us understand? Our mind has loins. Our mind, everybody say loins. Loins, asphus. Why is that important? Because loins, asphus, carry procreative power. In other words, uh, the loins of a man carries the seed, the seed for which reproduction is made possible. Loins carry the power of reproduction. Peter is admonishing the people of God to gird up protect, restrain, hold back the reproduction mechanism of their mind. He needs them to understand your mind has offspring. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. As many times we can't be sober because we don't understand that our mind has seed and it causes reproduction. Why do we need to understand that? If you reproduce with the wrong things, you'll have the wrong thoughts not just wrong thoughts that come to your mind, wrong thoughts that are reproduced by the loins of your mind. You're not just having them, you're actually producing them. Please follow what I'm saying. So no matter how many times I fight through that thought, I continue to have to fight through that thought. I've been fighting through those thoughts for the last 10 years. Well, how in long does it take God to give me victory? When does breakthrough come? How long do I have to wrestle with the heaviness in my mind? How long do I have to wrestle with the desire for things I know I shouldn't desire in my mind? How long does it take God to free me? Perhaps it's not freedom that we need. It's not that we need freedom in our mind. We need to learn how to gird up the loins of our mind because actually what we're fighting we continue reproducing because we allow our mind to enter into ideas that we really don't want to, to have to face many times we're asking God for a breakthrough in our mind 
And it's not that we need a breakthrough in our mind, more so that we need to learn how to gird up the loins of our mind. Everybody say, gird up your loins. In many cases, bondage is the result of our mind having offspring with an off thought. Want that to seek in? Everybody, everybody say offspring with an off thought. Our mind can have offspring with all thoughts. You know, our mind can have offspring with the idea of depression and therefore come under the authority of depressive thoughts. We keep having them no matter how much we don't want to have them, no matter how many times we fight um, through them. And it's not because the devil keeps on sending these thoughts in our mind. It's because many times we don't learn how to gird up our loins. So therefore, we're reproducing what we're fighting. Glory be to God. I, why do I keep fighting with this while well, I'm actually fighting my offspring. I actually produce this. I'm actually now uh, being fruitful and multiplying in my mind not understanding that it's my mind that's reproducing these things that I'm wrestling with. Our mind has offspring with the idea of sin cycles. Uh, 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 sometimes you just gotta get you, you're in sin cycles and you gotta break them. Our mind has offspring with dry seasons. God brings every saint in to draw dry seasons and we allow our mind to enter into that idea what do i mean i entertain it if i entertain the idea that saints have dry seasons i lose seed into that idea and i give out of the offspring called the thought i'm in a dry season and so i wind up in dry seasons and it's not because god ever called me to dry seasons he actually said in your belly shall flow rivers of living water i'll give you living water that your belly will spring up if anything is dry all i gotta do is really open my mouth so god doesn't bring me into dry seasons but the enemy sends ideas that i entertain and i wind up reproducing with and before you know it i'm going through dry seasons and saints aren't built for dry seasons so they will tell you they i'll never be dry another day in my life Never be dry another day in my life. Amen. Times when the devil gets the best of us. Come on, times when we need a vacation from God. I just need a break. I just need a break. And we're not saying we need a, a break from work. Many times we, we want a break from God. Amen. That's an idea. That if we're not careful, we reproduce with. So then we actually go on vacation to get away from church. To get away from prayer. To get away from truth and actually think that's a part of what we need. Because we've allowed our mind to enter into wrong ideas and reproduce. So there's times I just don't feel like praying. Because I need a vacation from God. There's times where praise just ain't hitting on nothing for me. I ain't, got, I, I ain't got no desire to praise. It just ain't there. My mind just ain't there. I, 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 my mind just ain't in the word. And we don't realize it, but all we're doing is fighting the offspring that we reproduce off of an off thought that's actually keeping us from staying engaged in the communion that God has called us to, called vine to branch. Amen. So we must gird up the loins of our mind. Keep our mind from entering into ideas we don't want it to reproduce with. See, this is one of our greatest challenges because we live in an information age. We live in an information age. We live in a social media age. And many times what we don't understand is, is social media is literally designed to engage the loins of our mind and have us reproducing out of thoughts of what people posted on Facebook. We're actually walking around thinking about how crazy people are on Facebook, how fake people are on Facebook. I can't believe they posted that on Facebook. I can't believe they had that dress on on Facebook. And the problem is, after having all those thoughts, none of those thoughts actually move us any closer to the kingdom, actually move us inside of anything God wants us to bear. But we're allowing our loins to be tied up with thoughts that have nothing to do with what God has called us to. 
And so we see somebody on vacation and get mad when we going to go on vacation. And I'm talking about there's problems. I'm real dissatisfied because I need a vacation too. And that thought did not come from God. That thought did not come from truth. That thought came from engaging with information that probably we shouldn't have been on. And now I'm mad at my spouse because they spending too much money for us to go on vacation. Or they don't want to spend no money for us to ever do nothing. Everybody else doing something why we can't do something. And don't understand the thought came from loins that should have never had its mind inside of that idea. Amen? I'm talking about marital issues. I told my wife yesterday, I said, I'll never post on vacation again. Next time we go on vacation, I'm not posting it. Because I'm talking. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, look, I mean, every week. Oh, we going out for this weekend. We doing this for the weekend. We doing that for the weekend. We doing this for the week. We we doing that. We going about the beach. We go, and I'm like, what? Where all that come from? And my wife told me I should have listened. She said, don't post it because people will try to live in that as if you actually live that half your life. That's less than one percent of my life. He said, stop posting it because people will treat it like the big picture. That ain't the big picture. Don't strive for that. Don't run after that. Don't, don't, don't engage that idea. That's just one picture in one time of the day. It doesn't take into account every morning that I get up at 3 and 4 in the morning and pray for two hours and then labor for another. It doesn't take into account anything that's really going on in my life. Amen? Amen? And many times we find ourselves struggling because we've reproduced with wrong ideas that have given us thoughts that we never should have had if we would have been in his face more than on Facebook. It's like, did you see what they said on Facebook? Why are you spending your time thinking about it? Do you see what they posted? Do you see what they're doing? I'm talking about folks actually struggling because of words people putting on Facebook. Do you see the word, no, somebody got to bind that? No, stop paying attention to it. Amen. You ain't got to bind it, ignore it. And all of our thoughts are tied into something that has nothing to do with advancing the kingdom of God. Because we don't understand that our mind has what? Loins. Our mind has loins. Anybody ever went through the day mad because of what somebody posted on Facebook? Anybody? What if you would have never looked at it? Come on. Anybody felt like you didn't have what you needed to have because you saw what somebody else had on Facebook? That's not called God. If you did it for them, you do it for me. We try to make that religious. That's called covetousness. It's not God did it. You did it for me. You did. No, no, no. That's called. Why do you want it? Did God say that's what he wanted to do? Is, is it because me and you saw somebody else with it? Hello, somebody. I know we quiet right now, but we, we need to deal with some real stuff so we can actually start having real power. See, we, we don't, God don't, we don't, God don't need people walking around with Facebook faith. That ain't, that ain't going to do nothing. Amen. If I spend more time on Facebook than I spend with my Bible, I have Facebook faith. If I spend more time on Facebook than I spend in prayer, I have Facebook faith. Amen? And I try to be a prophet, and I'm taking in all that pollution and allowing my mind to reproduce with that and think my prophecies are pure. Think I'm just hearing God when I hear God. I got to sift it through everything I fed the loins of my mind. Everything God speaks to us has to be sifted through our mind. Amen? That's why I love, watch this. That's why I love Matthew 6 and 25. It's one of my favorite verses. It's when the Lord says, take no thought on what you shall eat. Y'all remember that? 
take no thought on what you shall drink. Okay, y'all remember that? Take no thought on what you shall wear. What's the first thing we do? What we eat. What are we going out to eat after church? Oh, I can't wait. Amen. They got them good drinks too. Hold on, I got to get me an outfit for church. The first thing we do is take thought of what we're eating. First thing we do is take thought of what we're drinking. And the first thing we do is take thought of what we're wearing. It's real quiet right now. Amen. Because we like to point out the dirtiness that's obvious, but we don't like to deal with the stuff that's keeping us from having the power of calling them out of it. We just want to call it out, but we don't have power to clean them out. I don't want to just call out sin. Then I'm just an Old Testament prophet. So all they could do is say, sin, 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 sin. I want to be able to say the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Amen? The mo- so, so what happens is we're taking thought to what we're eating. We're taking thought to what we're drinking. And we know as black folks, we're going to take thought to what we're wearing. Oh, my God, I'm going to get that church outfit. I'm going to get them one heels. I'm going, I'm going, to, bring my, I'm going to bring my slips. Don't get me wrong, but they're going to see me in my heels. Hello? So No, 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 no. Before it's all said and done, they're going to see me in them heels, girl. I got my slips in the purse just in case. But I want them to see them things is fire. They're fire. That dress is fire. Oh, I'm wearing that dress. And I'm just sorry. Pastor, ain't gonna, I ain't going to praise him like that. I got to keep my dress right. And that hair, I just got my new lashes. Girl, when I praise God in that. They going to know the glory in the house. Wait till they see me in that. Taking thoughts for what we're wearing, taking thoughts for what we're eating, and taking thoughts for what we're drinking, and thinking that's not impacting what we're seeing. The more we have his mind, the more he moves through us. Because we're not girding up the loins of our mind, we're allowing things to take our thoughts that should take our thoughts. And as a result, we're not bringing all of us to the table so God's power can be seen through us. There's parts of us that are thinking about the chicken. There's parts of us that are thinking about the outfit. There's parts of us that are thinking about what we read on Facebook. There's parts of us that are thinking about what what was whispered in the corner. And so all of us aren't even here now now uh, so God can move through us the way that he wants to and thou shall love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart all of thy soul all of thy mind all of thy strength why because there's an exchange to the degree you give me you I give you me and I just need you to know I'm bigger than you if you give me you I'll give you me and when me show up sicknesses leave when me shows up cancer crumbles when me shows up demons are cast out but you're not bringing enough of you to the table for me to bring me to the table stop taking thought stop taking thoughts glory be to God thoughts are a reflection of intimacy just gonna talk for a minute Thoughts just don't pop up in our mind. They're conceived. Whatever pops up in your mind without you thinking is actually how your mind reproduces. Right? You remember? Before we were saved, before we started worshiping, before we start praising God, before we start really living for God, if something crazy happened, you know, it's like, Whatever popped up in our mouth first probably wasn't something we wanted to say in church. Oh, bleep, bleep, bleep. Right? Why? Because that was the loins of our mind. And the loins, whatever comes out of your mind 
naturally. Whatever comes to your mind naturally is actually the condition of the loins of your mind. But now since we've been saved, and I don't know how many people can shout over that, when those things happen, now thank you Jesus, a tongue breaks out. God, you're good. Rabbi Shanda, that it Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I might have get two or three claps. You know why? Because we have to learn how to actually gird up the loins of our mind. Because what happens instinctively is actually the reflection of the condition our mind is really in. It's not what we rehearse. Amen? But that takes girding. That takes restraining. That takes learning how to keep your reproductive part of your mind off of topics that you don't want it to have offspring with. So we come to church actually with thoughts, I don't feel like coming to church today. Where did that come from? It didn't come from God. And, and so we come into church. I don't feel like praising. I don't feel like talking to nobody. I didn't even feel like coming to church. I had to press my way through. So we got all these little babies that we'd had. Because we've been cheating on God with our mind, giving our mind to all types of stuff. And now I drag all this in church and say, God, deal with all these things. I, I don't feel like praising. I feel like I'm stuck. I, don't, I feel like, Lord, nobody listen to me. I don't feel like being around people, not understand. Why do I feel like this? They're, they're your offspring. That's based off of what you have allowed your mind to enter into and you didn't gird up the loins. You didn't protect your gates. You open yourself up to stuff on Netflix. Now, if you're fighting depression, you don't need to be watching movies with people who are now dealing with depression. If you're dealing with sexual sin, why are you watching stuff and, and flipping through social media where there's pornography presented? You got to gird up and restrain. Some of us need to get off Facebook because of the way it entices us. Because of the way it now turns stuff up on the inside of us. I'll never not feel like praising God. I'll never not feel like worshiping. I'll never not feel like giving him the glory. You, you know why we can say that and everybody's going to leave here saying that? Because we're going to leave here with our loins girded. We're going to leave here and we will not reproduce with those wrong ideas. We'll walk in the true liberty of God and stop allowing lies to run our life. Amen. First Peter 1 and 13. Watch what he says. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Gird up the loins of your mind. And then it goes on to say, and hope to the end. Girding our minds, protecting the gate called the mind, not allowing our thoughts to enter into and entertain ideas we don't want it to reproduce with. See, a lot of people think, you know, I'm strong enough. And so we're exposing ourselves to people that are contradicting the word. We're exposing ourselves to ideologies that say there's really no proof that there's God. And, 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 and it don't take all that to worship God. And, 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 and this is a faith movement. This ain't really the church that, that God is raising up. And we think we're strong enough to entertain all these ideas and don't know. The Bible says, be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. And before I know it, I'm on unstable ground wondering, is this the faith? Is this really God? Is God really moving? And we don't understand because you're not ready to expose your mind to that that measure of warfare because the enemy is after your mind you need to gird it up there's some people you don't need to talk to right now there's some people you don't need to hang out with right now what's wrong with me you've been hanging out with people that are coming against the ministry you're a part of why can't I get it together because you've been eating dinner With folks that say what we're doing here isn't God. And you think that's not going to have an effect on you? We're quiet. Because I'm strong. But you're struggling. And you can't find, where, where did I get like this? 
Why am I fighting with all this? Because you're friending foes. I'm strong enough. Really? Gird up the loins of your mind. See, there are people that are coming against and calling this the apostolic movement, the word of faith movement, passing out articles about my church. And I'm sitting there saying to myself, that might work on the people you pass in the pamphlet through too. You might pass out the pamphlets to these people. That might work on them. But you ain't going to tell me it ain't real because I saw it myself. You ain't going to tell me God don't come face to face with man because I came face to face with him myself. You ain't going to tell me that God's power don't cast out devils because I cast out devils myself. You ain't going to tell me that God, well, I can't lay hands on the sick and they recover because I laid hands on the sick and they recovered. So you can pass the pamphlet to somebody else, but you ain't going to tell me what I saw I didn't see. The reason why he's passing you the pamphlet because you don't have that level of witness. My Lord, my Lord. I'm going to leave this thing alone. I don't even, even know why I end up going here. But we wonder why we have such restraint because you are coming into agreement what's in complete disagreement. So I say, gird up the loins of your mind. Amen. I'm not going to follow nobody that's passing out pamphlets. Follow somebody that's reading the Bible. I don't need your pamphlet. Show me some scriptures. Amen. We got to stop this stuff. We got we to wake up and wonder what the hindrance is. We're in the middle of a move of God. Literally, God is moving like he's never moved in our lives. And we're, we're in warfare and don't even know why. Amen? Stuff is restraining us. Hold us like, why can't I get no further in the spirit? Because you're friending foes. You're sitting there listening to individuals that com completely come against what God is doing here. And you don't think that's going to have an effect on you? Hello, somebody? It's called unbelief. God don't say like, there are no more apostles. It is the doctrine of secession. What he don't know is the article he's passing out. I already know all about the idea. I don't need to read the article. I'm studied. And there is no such thing as the doctrine of secession. The doctrine of secession literally says that there were no more apostles after the original apostles and no more miracles. They all ceased with now that first generation of Christians. Well, we know that to be a lie because the Bible says it should be your foundational text that should call that out and say, I'm not entertaining that for one minute. The foundational text of our fellowship. And he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. That ain't the evidence yet, but until we come to the unity of the faith, until we're all in the unity of the faith, there will be apostles. Until we're all in the unity of the faith, there will be prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And there will be 1 Corinthians 12, gifts of healing, gifts of faith, discerning of spirits, speaking in tongues. Why are you entertaining that? I don't need 1 Corinthians 12 to not believe that. I've experienced it myself. Amen. But until you experience it, use 1 Corinthians 12. Use Ephesians 4. I don't know why I'm going this way this time. Maybe this is just to clean up some stuff because God gave us a breakthrough, but we're going to be back in breakdown if we keep on doing what we did before we got that breakthrough. There's some stuff that got to be cut. That's up to you if you cut it. If you don't listen, knock yourself out. Romans chapter 8, verse 24 and 25. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? But if we hope for what we see not... 
then do we with patience wait for it. We are saved by hope. We are sozo is now the Greek word. We are sozo by hope. We are delivered by hope. We are protected by hope. We are preserved by hope. That word hope. See, a lot of us say we need faith, but faith is actually the substance of things hoped for. I'm going to say that again. We're actually trying to get more faith, but God doesn't take that long to give us faith. Our problem is if the enemy wants to attack our faith, he's actually going to go after our hope because faith is the substance of things hope for. So now all faith does is bring material to hope. What is hope? Me calling those things that be not as though they were believing beyond belief like Abraham that when I'm past years, when it seems like God has taken too long, if he said it, he's still going to do it and my hope ain't going to move. And God said, if I have a hope that is ahead of me, I can now manifest faith to bring material that ultimately brings me into what I hope for. The enemy ain't after your faith. He's after your hope because hope is the seedbed for which faith flourishes. Amen? If I... Hope is for more to... Hope, by hope we're saved. He's not just talking about being saved from hell. He's talking about being saved from depression. By hope we're saved from discouragement. We're preserved. Uh, we're, we're preserved in joy by hope. We're preserved in peace. In other words, we continue to walk in peace through hope. We continue to walk in joy. Through, he saves our hope. He saves our joy. He saves our energy. He saves our victory. Whatever happens to us, hope saves it and makes sure it's preserved, maintained, sustained, continued. I'll, the stuff I have this week I'll have next month and have next year. That's what hope does. It saves what God is doing in us. Amen? And so what hope does is hope places our life outside of today's reach. If you don't get nothing else, I say get that. Hope places our life outside of today's reach. Hope is always ahead of now because now is seen. So what does that mean? That means this. Mario, come here. Mario is my hope. And hope that is seen is not hope. So hope is always not with me that day because I've seen things that day. Hope goes ahead of me. It don't matter 2, 10, 15, 20 years, 2 weeks, 2 months, 4. It's ahead of today. And because of that, it keeps my life out of reach of what attacks me today. So the enemy attacks me here. Come on. The enemy attacks me here, but my hope is up there. And so no matter what happens today, my hope put me out of today's reach. Today's problem can't kill me. Today's issue can't stop me. Today's struggle won't shut me down. What's I'm, why would I be discouraged if I have a hope that's already gotten beyond the day I'm having the issue? Why would I feel like giving in the towel when I have a hope that's beyond the day for which that circumstance is attacking me? What hope does is it saves us from having to fight through stuff. It saves us from having to hold on. It saves us from having to fight through discouragement. It saves us from having to fight through depression. Why? Because my hope is beyond today's reach. And all the devil got is what he formed against me today. But he don't know I got a hope that's already knocked on the door of 2022. I got a hope that's already knocked on the door of 2023. I got a hope that's already knocked on the door of 2024. Yes, Lord. Hope saves us from struggling. Because I got something beyond today already. I need somebody to say I am more than a conqueror. Watch this. I am more than a conqueror. Watch this. So, 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 so now, I'll show you a couple of more things and I'll be done. 
First Peter 1 and 3. Yeah, yeah, let's work that. Hallelujah. It says here, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope. Everybody say lively hope. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Hope generates in us liveliness. Come on. Hope makes us alive. I come that you might have life. Hope doesn't say you need to live. Hope generates life. He hath, now we have been begotten unto a lively hope. He, it now Hope now generates life. When we have hope, we don't drag through situations and circumstances we come alive our devotion is alive our praise is alive come on our worship is alive God is alive to us life is alive to us our, our energy is alive so we just clap different from other people because I'm alive I ain't got time to be patty caking God we sing different because we're alive I ain't got time to be singing into the air hope now brings life it brings abundant life. Do you understand what abundant life is? That's more life than what you need for that moment. I need a certain measure of life to praise him and God says I give you more life than you need to praise me. I got too much stuff bubbling up in me not to make some noise. I got too much stuff. I got abundant life. I got more praise than I got minutes. I got more worship than I got hours. I got more desire than I have time. I have abundant life. How dare I not come in here and act undignified? How dare I not come in here and bless God with everything that I have? I've been given life through hope. Do you understand? I have more energy to praise than I have time to praise him. That's why he said if I had 10,000 tongues, if I could praise God 10,000 different ways every second, it still wouldn't be enough to bless his holy and his righteous name. That's why people don't get it. You know the times when you're most alive are the times when you're most focused on God. The more you bless him, those are the times you woke up early. Those were the times you didn't need an alarm clock. Those were the times the days wasn't so hard. Those were the times work wasn't a struggle you know why because you are operating in a lively hope praising him made you alive seeking him made you alive devoting to him made you alive and the enemy came in and started making our minds reproduce with other thoughts and before you know it work is a grind again Well, we know it. Going to church, man, going to church is a privilege. Y'all don't know. I already preached one message. Sweated down my whole suit. But I got more life than I got pulpit. God, if I had to, I could do this again. If I It's a lively hope. A lack of life is always the reflection of a lack of hope. I'm going to say that again. We can't have hope and not have life. Please hear me. I'm, I still got hope. Not clapping like that. I'm still hanging on to my hope. Not singing like that. I still hold on to the hope with my head down sitting in the seat. The reason why many of us struggle with faith because we don't understand when we're not walking in hope. Hope gives life, man. Hope will make you beat the alarm clock. You just wake up and can't go back to sleep. And I ain't tired. What happened? Hope kicked in. And God gave you life. Because you said, God, I want more of you. And God said, okay, I'm going to give you more life than what you need. 
to go to work. You got to work for 10 hours, but I'm going to give you life to stay up for 14. I'm going to give you enough. If you want me, come and get me. Come on, if you got that hope, I'll stir you up. I'll pour my glory on your life. I'll release my spirit into your loins. I'll give you the life you need to come and find me. I'll give you the life you need to seek my faith. If we would get back to the right hope, we wouldn't have a, a, a problem living. A lack of life is always the reflection of a lack of hope. We can't have hope and not have life. Did y'all hear what I just said? Amen. I could tell whether you have hope or not by how you're praising him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, he's good. You are hopeless. Ain't no life on your praise, man. Do you understand that praise is supposed to make others start praising God? Praise has so much power that it'll provoke other folk into praise. If it's from, it releases life. It's praise that releases life. You ever been beside somebody who praised God so much that while you were sitting down, you felt like you were doing a disservice? I can't keep sitting like this. These jokers praising God like this. I'm going to have to get up out of my seat and I'm going to have to bless his name because now I'm feeling the, 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 the repercussions of hope. Hope is hitting my feet. Hope is hitting my hands. Hope is hitting my mouth. And It's a lively hope. I already know when me and Lady Mary come in the environment, it's going to shift every time. Because I ain't coming in here playing. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. I want I want to put you to shame. You actually think you I'm going to let you out praise me? You out of your doggone mind. I don't care if I've been at a service this morning. I'm still going to out bless you. I'm still going to out clap you. I'm still going to be more undignified than you. And if you want to beat me, come and get me. I know I'm old school and I don't know all the moves you know I'll bank head bounce on you if I got to I'll do the wop on you if I got to I'll running man on you if I got to but I got too much hope to That's why we make a joyful noise, because it ignites hope. That's why we clap our hands, because it ignites hope. That's why we... I will bless the Lord. Glory to his name. Can you feel it turning? Can you feel life in the room? Come on. Can you, can you sense some stuff beginning to break? My God, hope is hitting your life. My God, hope is hitting your life. My God, hope is hitting your life. Yeah, 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 yeah. says I need to bring you back to a lively hope because I'm going to bring hopeless people through the doors hopeless crack addicts hopeless drug addicts hopeless drunks hopeless prostitutes hopeless addicts and I need somebody that won't try to take them through the Roman road I need somebody that when they hit the room hope hits their life something in them tells them they can live something in them tells them they can change Something in them tells them I won't kill myself. I'm a when somebody walks through the doors, this is what they should get slapped in the face with. When somebody walks through the doors, this is what should hit their spirit. It's hope. I got time to be playing. Somebody ain't going to commit suicide because of this shout. Got time to be playing. Glory. 
Somebody's not going to give up because of this praise. Hope is going to hit him. Some man is going back to his family because of this worship. We've been called to a lively hope. You've tried a hundred times to stop and you ain't been able to stop and you've given up hope. But hope is rising again to know that you have victory in Christ Jesus. The cycle is broken. Come on. The generational curse is broken. The cycle is broken because of hope. People don't need, people don't need our church program. They need hope. The world is hopeless. They don't have no life. That's why they need an alarm clock. I don't, I don't use an alarm clock. I don't need it. Hope won't let me sleep beyond a certain time. Hope, wake me up and say, you ready? Let's do it again. Many of the things we rely on is because hope isn't sufficiently fixed in our spirit. But God is saying right here and right now, I'm about to slap a mantle of hope back on your life. I'm about to pour a glory of hope on your spirit. I'm about to... That will break every curse, that will destroy every chain, that will break every yoke, that will reverse every work of the devil. Some of you are going to get free clapping. You ain't going to get free coming to the altar. Some of you are going to get free shouting. You ain't going to get free hearing the message. Hope is going to do it. Hope is going to do it. Thank you, Jesus. 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 I'm telling you, there's coming a day where people who have never been in church, a day in their life, they're 35 years old, a day after being in church, they're going to outshout you. A day after being in church, they're going to outpraise you. I'm telling you, God is about to bring us into a because they were hopeless. They tried everything they could to get out of it and couldn't stop. They've been, walk, everybody's walked away from them because they believe that they're lying about wanting to change. They want to change, done everything they could to change. And everybody said, you ain't gonna never change. And they've lost all hope, but they come into a house, my God. They come into a body of believers who have been born and generated a lively hope. And something in them says, hold up one minute. Maybe I can change too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Shadalabakandarabashita. I lift every false weight off of you. I lift every burden off of you. I curse everything suffocating hope on the inside of you. I call the deep part of you that still has hope in God. I call forth the deep part of you that still has hope in God. Thank you, Jesus. God, I'm ready to take my hope back. 
I'm ready, I'm ready to hope again. I need somebody in here that wants to hope again. I'm talking about I'm ready for hope to hit my life where I can't sleep all night like I used to when you first touched me with the blood of your cross. I, I'm ready for hope to hit my life where I can't stop praising you like when you first blew your wind in my spirit. I'm ready to get hit by a hope where I can't stop talking about you like I did the first time I heard your voice and saw you move in my life. God, I'm ready for my hope to awaken back up. I need somebody in here that don't mind blessing God. Come on, bless them for, come on, bless them for the, for the hope of glory. Come on, bless for the hope of glory. God, hit me. Restore the hope of my salvation. God, restore. I'm tired of life being so hard. I'm tired of getting up in the morning being so hard. I'm tired of going through the day being so hard. God, give me my hope back. you'll never see anyone walk in hope quietly people who walk in hope know how to continue to bless their God I believe that's why the Lord oh, talked about breaking silence. I don't, uh, maybe that's what he was after at the top of what we came together for. Glory be to God. But God said, I'm not just going to break my, I'm the only reason why I'm breaking my silence is because you're breaking yours. Come on. I need your lips back. Come on. I need your lips back. Your lips have talked about your enemies. Your lips have talked about how fake people are your lips have talked about how you are struggling with church but I need your lips to lift me up again I need your lips to praise me again give them back give them back to me come on come on open your mouth until hope fills you again praise them until hope fills you again Bless them until hope fills you again. Let hope fill this room. Come on, come on. Let hope fill this room. Come on, hallelujah. Let the life of God, let abundant life hit you again. Where you got more clapping than you got time to clap. Where you got more praise than you got time to praise. Oh, hope, 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 hope. I'm out of reach of the weapons today. Today can't take me out. My hope is beyond today. I'm saved by hope. Hey, 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 hey. I break off the influence of the hopeless. On your life, the whispers of the hopeless. Those who don't believe, therefore, want to bring you into unbelief. Those who haven't entered in, therefore, want to keep you from entering in. I break the hope that's been vomited on your heart. The hopelessness. Nah, man, hope looks like something. Hope looks like a demonstrative praiser. Hope looks like a man who won't stop blessing God. Hope looks like somebody who won't stop dancing. Hope looks like something. Thank you, Lord. Let hope rise again. Come on, let hope rise again. 
I promise it's going to break the struggle off your everyday life. His yoke at God is hope helps you get back in the yoke. This ain't going to be hard. This is Disney World to us. Oh, this is this, this right here? This is what we do. Glory to God. Just build an altar where you are. I'm about to pray over and bless you. In the name of Jesus. Lady Mary, if you would come. Come on, come on, make a sound, make a sound, don't be silent. Make a sound, everybody, come on. Make a sound in the house. Hallelujah! Come on, let hope arise. Let's continue to lift our voices, hallelujah, hallelujah, at our altar, hallelujah, that we have made, hallelujah. God, we just thank you, hallelujah, right now in the name of Jesus. God, we repent for losing hope, hallelujah. We repent first and foremost, God, for losing hope, hallelujah. And we thank you, Lord God, that you're so merciful to forgive us. We thank you for that right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your kindness, your mercy, your tender mercies towards us, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But today we also thank you, Lord God, that we have hope again. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, for this blessed hope, for this lively hope, oh God. We bless you right now in the name of Jesus. And God, we will be so careful, hallelujah, not to let it go again, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for this hope that you have given unto us today, Lord God. Hallelujah, that we have now embraced, hallelujah, oh God, reaches beyond this day, that reaches beyond this time, that reaches beyond this moment. And we thank you now in the name of Jesus before the situation comes, before the problem comes, before the challenge comes. Hallelujah. That our hope is already gone before us and we bless you for that. We bless you, Lord God, for revealing that to us now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that we will not hang our heads any longer. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you are the lifter of our heads. I bless you right now that my head is not lifted and I will not drop it again. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up for the King of glory has come in. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. God, we lift up our hands today. And God, we decree and declare that we won't drop it again in the name of Jesus. For we know that we have grabbed a hold of this blessed hope. We have grabbed a hold of this lively hope. We have grabbed a hold to life and life more abundantly. Hallelujah. You said that you have come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So we walk in that life now in the name of Jesus we'll walk in that life that you have given unto us in the name of Jesus we bless you today oh God for hope we bless you today oh God for life we bless you today oh God for new life we bless you today oh God for a freshness mm -hmm. A freshness, oh God, a freshness, oh God, a freshness, oh God. We bless you, oh God, today in this place, hallelujah, that we will go forth and inflame those around us because we have hope. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus because we have hope, God, that we will be a magnet to those that are unshamed, that we will be a magnet to those that are lost, oh God, and they will, we will be able to draw them into the kingdom because of this blessed hope that we have. I thank you right now, God, in the name of Jesus, that as we bless your name, as we praise your name, as we lift up our heads, God, men and women are going to know who is the God that you serve, who is this man, hallelujah, that you 
you have put your hope in? Who is this man that you have put your trust in? Who is this man, hallelujah, that you have rested in? Hallelujah, God. I thank you that our lives shall be a testimony. I thank you that our lives shall be a witness. I thank you, Lord God, that the life that we live shall draw men unto you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We bless you today. We bless you today. And God, we thank you that this time, Lord God, we won't let it go. We will not let it go. Because God, you're showing us more. You're revealing more to us. God, I thank you right now that blinders are being taken off our eyes. Scales are being taken off our eyes. The trick and the deception of the enemy is being revealed, oh God. I thank you right now. What you have heard, hallelujah, is just not good, a good message, but revelation. Things have been revealed to you, hallelujah. And God says, I'm holding you accountable to live out of what you've heard. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. You have given us all that we need. We'll be a good steward. We're going to be a good steward over that which you trusted us with. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, it is so. Bless the Lord. Come on, bless the Lord. Hallelujah.